how to remain unshakable and immovable and Baba says at Amrit Vela so do you want to remain unshakable and immovable come what may because this is a question we really need to ask ourselves do we value stability so much because you know we usually think that we value you know uh, like in the case of peace sometimes i have spoken this that we say we want peace we say we love peace but then we just lose our peace at the drop of a hat so we don't value our peace when we are faced with a situation or a behavior so we choose to lose our peace we must understand it's a choice we make and choices are based on valuation so you know it's very subtle it's a very subtle machinery that works inside but you choose that which you value more so if there is a loss which you think you know a material loss which you think you value that thing very much and you lose it then you don't mind losing your peace over that because you value that thing very much now baba has given us the knowledge to be soul conscious and in soul consciousness our valuation must change so when we are soul conscious we value the eternal more we value the imperishable more we don't value the perishable too much because the perishable and the changeable is by design you know perishable and changeable so it has to it is destined to perish and change so we do not so we value the so we must understand this equation we value the external world right we definitely value the external world but not at the cost of our inner qualities and virtues so when it starts costing us our inner stage then we let it go so you know you must so this is a very good way to understand where to strike the balance so we must understand that we must value the body we must take care of the body we must value relationship we must value you know work and even remaining concerned about things is not bad but when it when that concern starts shifting to worry when does that concern start becoming worry when it starts costing you your inner peace and that's when you must let that concern go so that is the art of letting go and precisely how to decide when to let go so you know there is usually this image i don't know i like this image very much that if something is drowning you don't just let it drown right you try to pull it back so if some somebody is down drowning <laughs> although that doesn't look like a good example but yet if somebody is drowning you give him your hand and you try to pull that person out but you realize that after a time there is a moment when 
instead of you pulling them out, they are pulling you in. And then you have to let go. Yes, so that's, that's the art of letting go. So you see that this is the time of destruction. So everything is disintegrating. And you make effort to keep things together. It's not like you don't make any effort. It's not like you say it is the time of destruction. So instead of tomorrow, let it get destroyed today. <laughs> no, you have to also respect the drama that it is not destroyed until it is destroyed, right? So you obviously make efforts to keep everything together. You make efforts to keep your disintegrating body together. <laughs> yes, so there's something or the other happening in the body every day and you're seeing the doctor, you are taking medications, you're consulting for surgery. So all that has to be done. You are trying to keep your relationships together even if they are not listening to you, even if the relationship isn't good. You don't give up on them, you, you keep approaching, you keep talking, you keep communicating, you keep giving good wishes, good, good feelings for them. That's all there. And then even about finances or work, you keep making your effort. But you have to keep checking inside whether you are doing it in stability or not. And when you are, you feel that you are a bit shaky inside, then you just let go of that thing for that second and focus on the inside. And then stabilize the inside and then take care of it outside. So that's the law. Now Baba has given us a very beautiful method in the Murli today how to build this unshakable and immovable stage inside. And Baba says, in Amrit Vela, early in the morning when you get up for yoga, do you get up for yoga? Because what has to be done in Amrit Vela has to be done in Amrit Vela. Only listening to what to do in Amrit Vela won't help. Yes, so I, and I'm saying this with experience because there was this brother the other day and I was taking a class about what to do in Amrit Vela and he was nodding his head like this, this, this. And then I asked, do you get up at Amrit Vela? I said, no. So then why, what are you nodding for? <laughs> do you have any plans to get up at Amrit Vela? No. He said, no. He said, I am into an office. They make me slog for 14 hours. I am not planning to do any Amrit Vela. But he was nodding his head very well. So, so that's not how it works. So then he said, so then he said, am I wasting my time here then? So I said, you're not wasting your time here. You're wasting your time anywhere then. <laughs> so it's not like you go somewhere else and you will not waste your time. You'll waste your time everywhere then. Because if you are not laying the foundation right, then obviously the whole building will not be okay. So it will always be jittery and shaky. So your whole day will be like that, full of waste and full of negative karma. So first thing is paying attention that we understand the importance of Amrit Vela. I like, you know, sometimes when you are a Hindi speaker, you always think in Hindi, speak in Hindi. You sometimes don't appreciate the word in Hindi. So, you know, when I had been hearing this word Amrit Vela for very long, and then once I heard it translated in English, and it was called the time of nectar. And then I realized, okay, it is Amrit Vela. So, you know, it is like 
the time of nectar so when the nectar of baba baba's knowledge pure love purity peace it just flows into you and fills your you the soul with that nourishing nectar so that's the time and baba says in that time what you do is you practice applying three tilaks so tilak is applied here in bhakti and in gyan the significance of a tilak is that tilak is smriti ka tilak so tilak is awareness so when baba says that apply a tilak it means that hold it in your awareness so baba says in amrit vela apply the tilak of three dots so usually you know when people apply a tilak it's in the form of a dot so baba says apply three dots three points of awareness hold it in your buddhi in amrit vela now first dot is i am a dot i am a soul now i was just thinking and it's my you know it's what i feel inspired to talk about today so baba says that when you apply a dot then it puts a full stop so when you apply a dot that i am a soul then all your chatter of ego is stopped have you seen that noise of that ego creates inside and i remember there was this kanya this young baba's bachi and she told me something very nice she said that whenever my mind starts thinking egotistically and it goes round and round and round thinking about why what when then i just ask my mind chup ho ke kone mein baith jao sirf bindu ho tum you're just a dot shut up and sit in a corner <laughs> and that was very beautifully told by her <laughs> and whenever i think about it it really makes me feel actually i'm just a dot what is this hue and cry about <laughs> so you know, there is so much of chatter inside about which originates from ego so you know i was not respected i was not taken care of i was insulted i was not treated well this that and then you tell yourself you're just a dot you don't don't get you know <laughs> why are you being in so much of ego you're just a dot you have to go like a dot so i think it's a very good method to stop that chatter of ego inside you and whenever there is a uh, there is this wave of ego then it disturbs you from within it shakes your stage your vibration and baba says that apply this dot in the morning because you know when you apply it in the morning then all day that power of what you have held in your awareness in the morning is active and then you just need to revise you don't need to build your stage the stage is already built during the day when you feel that there is some wave of ego you can just recall i am a soul and that will be enough because the foundation is already strong and then there is the second dot and the second dot is my baba the dot and i think that 
when I apply this dot then all my chatter of fear stops fear, insecurity, uncertainty so you know whenever there is all of this noise inside of you you can just apply this one dot my Baba is here and there is one very beautiful picture in Baba's Shantivan home and in that it is written Chinta mat karo bache main betha hu. So I am here, why worry? And I think that whenever you apply this dot then all your worries and fears and insecurities they are taken care of. So basically it is all noise, it doesn't mean anything because ego is also you know false and all these other emotions are also false but you need some tool to kill them <laughs> so Baba says this is the second dot and but you have to build this beautiful relationship this deep heart to heart relationship with Baba in the morning so that you really feel throughout the day that I am with Baba and Baba is with me because you know if um, I just I, I'll tell you just one very simple thing somebody calls you or somebody comes to meet you and you don't meet them you keep them waiting then you don't have the confidence that they will take care of you <laughs> although they might it's not that they won't they might but you lose that confidence so when it is really time to meet Baba when Baba is waiting for us if I have woken up if I have built that connection if I have had that sweet conversation if I have you know made those exchanges of promises and this and that and that relationship is strong then you have that confidence all through the day that Baba is there with me and okay whatever is there will be taken care of so sooner or later but it will be taken care of so when you have this then it's the second dot and then the third dot is that of the drama so there is a lot of uh, upheaval in the face of situations so when you are faced with situations and unforeseen circumstances so whenever something happens suddenly something for which you are not prepared then there is a lot of turbulence inside so it's not about something you are thinking in the mind or something some fear in the mind or it's not about ego but some situation has come up suddenly an unexpected behavior an unexpected situation and then this point of drama helps us to apply a full stop and come to that place of peace and stability in that point because you see that things happen suddenly yes and there are so many suddenly so you know you're waiting for something to happen you know some project to get approved or something and then suddenly you know that's not happening so you, know, you receive a rejection letter or something and then suddenly your mind is all upset and in a jittery but the thing is you see Baba tells in the blessing today one very beautiful word move forward so you know when you have to move forward even physically it's very important you lift one leg so until and unless you lift your awareness from what happened you cannot focus on what to do that's the important thing and until you 
put a full stop you cannot move forward so yes it happened suddenly yes it didn't signal you yes it came as a surprise but still you have to move forward and the more time you uh, you know you need to put a full stop the 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 more you get delayed in your moving forward and we have to go a long way so for us moving forward continuously is very important so do you understand that in sangam yug we cannot afford to spend even one second deliberating on something that happened so i'll tell you one thing so there is this one person who promised something for seva okay and then one day he just said um so one day i asked him so you had promised this for seva and uh, so what about it so he just said oh i cannot do it and he just he done he didn't even <laughs> so you know he was not even apologetic about it <laughs> or he didn't even feel that he needed to inform me in time so then as soon as that happened i said drama and then i had to think about something else for that seva and even if i spend 10 minutes or 1 hour thinking about him or that he has made his decision right and he is entitled to his decision <laughs> and i can i have no right whatsoever to you know i can plead but then why should i yes so baba did that baba will do the next thing so that's how it goes so you have to understand that you cannot there is nothing you can do about what has already happened somebody said no means no somebody said something was happening and then it didn't happen there was an earthquake there was a you know your file was lost <laughs> something happened something happened you cannot do anything about it and then what you have to do is put a full stop and then in that you must remember the point of drama and early in the morning in amrit vela you must you know baba in the hindi murli uses a very good phrase drama ke patte par apne ko khada karo means just position yourself on the law of drama it is what it is just remind yourself very strongly in the morning amrit vela it is what it is and it is beautiful Yes, it is what it is, and it is benevolent. It is good. It is Baba's drama. Everything is good in the drama. So once you do this exercise in the morning, then all through the day it will be very easy to apply a full stop to whatever that comes your way. And when you, when this helps you to. maintain an immovable and unshakable stage then what happens is you keep moving forward all through the day you don't lose your time thought energy and whatever is you know the the optimum level of you know whatever can be done and achieved and whatever can be made is done through you as an instrument i i like this word optimum i don't like this word maximum because maximum i think is a word of ego <laughs> so you think that this is the maximum and you want to go there but you know optimum means the maximum subject to constraints and whatever are the constraints of the drama according to that you just be very flexible and achieve the optimum
and that's where this three full stops because you know ego spoils a lot of game and only today morning I was talking to Bhai and I was saying you see when a person is in ego they don't realize what they are doing ego makes you engage in thought word and action that is too much below your dignity and this veil of ego so you know you must take care that ego stops your progress like anything fears they don't uh, so fears they mess up with your vibration and they do not allow you to attract the best and then there is this whole drama thing where you get stuck in the past second and don't move forward so when these majorly these three things are taken care of then your progress is very continuous so this is I think the blessing today and then in the slogan Baba says that even when you have a very you know forceful flow of waste thoughts so sometimes you know you are not very uh, self-aware you don't have your buddhi turned in so you know attention is not inside and then waste thoughts start yes what are waste thoughts thinking about things that are not in our control yes all the thoughts about past future or the other person's behavior or some situation which is not in your control and you are just your st thoughts have started and then they are in a flow and then you suddenly re become aware there is a moment when you become aware and then mostly what happens is in that moment you allow it to flow further yes sometimes first you are not aware and then when you are aware you say oh the situation is very big what can we do and it's really a worrisome situation so obviously these thoughts will come or you say already I have wasted so much time so let me sleep <laughs> I am tired now so you don't take that decision to transform it so it's just a decision that you have to make one decision that no I've this was going on and now it has to stop just put a break with that decision and then start thinking about something or doing something which is productive so just make that decision even if you are tired no problem even if you have not noticed and you got tired out of it take that decision change that whole flow into something which is fruitful and productive and then if later go to sleep don't go to sleep with that in that frame of mind so that's also very very important and be very careful about this before going to sleep you know just when you're going to sleep these these things start you know because in a yogi's life you know we are always attentive and I have noticed that when we hit the bed <laughs> you know at that time you just let your guard down for some time and then you say okay now I'm, I'm sleeping now no more attention and that is when all the maya comes and uh, just <laughs> piles itself on you and then you start thinking about everything you know all the worry all the fear that you didn't think about in the morning till evening all that starts so all or, or you know this work needs to be done and that is unattended and uh, this can meet this challenge and how to overcome it all will come running at that time and then you have to put a break so that's a decision you have to make so this is their end today's Murli Sar. So the essence is very 
interesting. So, Baba says, Sweet children, the father whom you have been remembering for half the cycle now gives you the order to remember him. And by following this order, you will go into the ascending stage. Now it looks very interesting that Baba is saying, you have been remembering Baba for half the cycle and now you have to remember him by order. Now we have already been remembering him, so what is the point? <laughs> so now Baba says, now you have to remember him on Srimat, which is with his full introduction. Okay, so earlier also we remembered Baba, but we remembered Baba as we thought he is. And now Baba says, you remember me as I am. And the way I ask you to remember me. Okay, so in the Murli Baba specifies that he is a point of light and he has a name, a home, he has qualities, he is a conscient being, all of that. Baba says, and then Baba says, he is my father, teacher, Satguru. So I must keep all of that in my awareness when I remember Baba. So this is something interesting and then Baba today uses the word nature cure. And Baba says that by remembering the one father and serving the yagya with love, your natures are cured. Okay, now in the world when you use this word nature cure, so it means that you heal the body through natural methods. So what does nature cure mean in the world? You heal the body through natural methods. So you use something which is natural, all the natural products and everything and then let your body heal through that. So that is called nature cure in the world. But Baba today gives us a very beautiful law. Baba says, When you souls are cured, your bodies too will be cured. Yes, so Baba says, You cannot cure your body even if you use any natural, artificial, allopathy, whatever. <laughs> You know, your body will not get permanently cured until you souls are cured. And that's why, you know, most diseases these days are chronic. Chronic illnesses. Why? Because this is the law. Until the soul is cured, the body will not be cured. And Baba says the body will be permanently cured only in Satyug now. And for that, you the soul has to be cured right now. So when Baba says nature cure, nature cure means the healing of the soul. And that will happen through two methods. One is remembering the father and the second is serving the yagya with love. Yes, so I will tell you one in so there is this sister and she has some uh, you know she is going through some karmic settlement of the body and she one day said Didi I want to ask you something I want to come for some karmana seva every day karmana seva is I want to come and you know cut some vegetables or do some cleaning or some some something of that sort in the center and I said okay but may I know why so she said um, because I am going through physical settlement of the body and I feel that I, I, I don't even know if it's right but from inside I have this calling that if I do karmana seva I will get healed so I said okay you come and then she started doing that seva every day and 
she says that although you know i don't know whether medically i'm getting better but i stay very happy these days and i i really feel like i am healing from inside and baba says that you see that it's not like the body will get healed you know immediately so you might need an operation you might need something right that's we are not saying this is it's like a substitute but the thing is when you do karmana seva you the soul are healed and then the soul is supporting the body in its healing is otherwise the soul is so the you are taking medication it's healing the body and the soul which is full of vices and you know peacelessness it is doing the doing the work contrary to the medicine but here the soul is also supporting the body in the healing so the soul gets healed when you do karmana seva the soul gets healed when you remember baba and then baba says when the soul is completely healed you get a new body in satyog okay so this is something that baba tells today and baba also focuses on purity today because baba says you called out to me for so long and now my shrimat is to remember me and be pure so you have to do that you cannot call me for so long and when i come just don't do what i say <laughs> it doesn't work like that so baba i found that baba is today warning us in that way <laughs> so i found is uh, i don't know i got that feeling from the murli so i shared it and then today in the murli baba talks about um food and so baba says that in shrinad dware so baba gives an example that in shrinad dware they tie a piece of cloth over their mouths while working so baba says it's but baba teaches us that whatever you do you can stay in remembrance while engaged in activity so baba says it's not about keeping your mouth closed it's about keeping your mind <laughs> open only to baba <laughs> so even when the mouth is closed so you know when the mouth is closed then particles from the mouth will not fall into the food you prepare but if your mind is open and it's thinking about all the unnecessary stuff then that particle will fall into the food <laughs> so baba says that this is shrimat that you remember baba while doing any activity preparing food doing any other work also and then baba says that people in bhakti think that they cook for god so you know this they say that i cook for shrinath but baba says today when you cook pure food in remembrance of baba you will receive strength from that so baba doesn't eat the food <laughs> so when you cook food in baba's remembrance you will receive strength from that so it's not doing for baba it's following shrimat for our own benefit and then baba also says that people in bhakti they hold fast in order to go to the land of krishna and you understand that you are going to the land of krishna yes it's not it's not like you want to go you are going it's time you have understood the drama but this is why you are being made worthy now we understand we cannot go by holding a fast we have to be worthy to go somewhere yes can you become a doctor by hold by holding a fast 
can you become a doctor without going to school without studying without going to a medical college just by praying and holding a fast can you be a doctor no then how can you become a deity so baba says if you want to be anything you have to be worthy of it qualified so baba says you don't become a deity you don't go to the land of krishna by fasting and praying you go by becoming worthy of it and when you have satyugi sanskars then you are worthy of it and this is why baba is teaching us the method how to not be influenced by kaliyugi sanskars and how to create satyugi sanskars while living in kaliyugi setting so this is today's murli om shanti